there's been you know, major land loss occurring in the state of Louisiana. Over the last 80 years or so, 2,000 square miles have been lost. Everybody down there has stories of their lives that are associated with land loss, being able to talk about how far they used to be able to walk or take a small boat out to go fishing and be surrounded by marsh or swamp that is now just like completely open water. We've started to see this first handful of towns having to start to actually pick up and leave because that the ground that they grew up on is not suitable for them to persist anymore. As the islands that we have are degrading, we unfortunately have to, if we want to maintain them, as well as maintain habitat for the birds, get out there and physically directly restore them. It's really important to um, restore these islands, not just for the birds, but places like New Orleans and inland areas. Uh, it's going to lessen the impacts of the hurricanes. After that comes the hope that the wildlife likes what you've provided for them. The loss of these wetlands is not unexpected. In 1897, an engineer with the Corps of Engineers wrote an article in National Geographic saying, the benefits of protecting communities and industries along the river and the use of the river for navigation outweighs the consequences of disconnecting the wetlands from the river. However, the wetlands are going to collapse in several generations. Humans started interacting with the river once they kind of realized the valuable resources of the coast, but more importantly, the use of the river as a highway. And there's this trade-off between the economic driver and the impact on ecosystem, the habitat, and the coast. These birds get two different types of bands. They get a federal band, and then in addition to that, they get this uh, alphanumeric color band. And so this is what I look for whenever I come out to the island. We go out at night because it's a lot easier to catch multiple adults. It causes less stress to the chicks. The goal was to put alphanumeric bands that can be reported by anybody that has like a camera or a spotting scope or even binoculars to see what the response is to a major restoration if they would come back to the island or if they might go somewhere else or even if they just weren't nesting. We didn't have high hopes for large nesting numbers the first year because we pumped in sediment and we covered up some of the prior vegetation and we planted a bunch of vegetation, but that takes years to get tall enough for these pelicans to be able to nest in them. The Mississippi River doesn't start and end in Louisiana. We're feeling the effects of actions throughout the length of that river. And we probably need to do a better job of convincing people or demonstrating to people that the effects that they have downstream eventually come upstream in terms of the services that this area and that the river provides to them. One of the things that you know, we work towards here or try to help with the Center for River Studies is actually getting people to think about the river also and how the water flows down the river, but more importantly, how sand moves down that river because we're helping the state understand how to utilize the river for restoration projects, whether that's dredging and marsh creation projects or whether it's river sediment diversions. We like to be a place where people can come, go stand over the model and kind of use it as a tool to get their brains going and maybe connecting things that they hadn't connected before. What we need to be thinking and that next generation needs to be thinking is how do we have more flexibility, be able to adapt in the future so that you're still making sure that the river is navigable, people, industry along the river are safe and that we have healthy ecosystems. You're in a really dynamic bay 
It can be kind of a little miniature seafaring adventure to get there. Coming up on a seabird colony, you, you smell the birds before you see them. It's a pretty strong, distinctive aroma. Once you pick your head back up from trudging around a little bit, you see just the thousands of birds. And that's just, it's a sight that you can't see anywhere else. There are hundreds of adult brown pelicans, great egrets, spoonbills, terns, gulls, all jumping up to see what you're doing, what you're all about, sometimes getting very close. With all the land loss, the pelican numbers were kind of maxed out. So now that we're restoring these islands, it's going to make our pelican numbers more stable. They're going to start growing again. They're still building. I suspect that we'll probably have around three to 5,000 in the next month. And they started nesting on the ground. They started nesting in areas that they, we've never seen them nest in before. It's just amazing to be out there and see how big of a success this island has been, this restoration project has been, and just to be around all those birds. By being there on their turf and seeing what they go through every day, I mean, that's something that really connected me and, and filled me with respect and motivation to, to do my work. I don't know exactly where it started, but the species has always been an iconic symbol of the region and has maintained a place in a lot of people's hearts for a long time.